everyone, welcome to Wandering Soup Traveling Folk. We is back. I am Kat. This is Amber. And we are finally back. And it's been a mighty, mighty long time since we've done this video blogging thing. Uh, gosh, at least two or three months now, hasn't it? Yeah. At least two months. Yeah. At least two months. I got sick over the Christmas holidays or... Actually, most of December. She was down. I was out. I was out. And then before that, our camera broke. And so we had to get a new camera. And let us know if you like the camera. It's the exact same one. So, anyway. Uh, so, it's been a long time. So, bear with us as we get into the flow of things. And speaking of bears, and that was the best segue I could think of. Uh, it's cold outside, y'all. It's cold here. It's cold there. I'm sure you're watching this from... Um, and we've been thinking about all the warm places that we could be at right now. Really warm, tropical even. South Africa, mm. Bora Bora, yes. Bali. So we thought we could talk about travel. You know, warm places, spaces, and things like that. Since we are now a full service travel agency. Ding, ding. Uh, use us. <laughs> throw it, go ahead and throw that out there. Mm -hmm. And since we are now a full service travel agency, we just want to talk about some travel related things, some questions that, that we've been getting, answer some of those, and uh, just impart some information um, from the things that I've learned from our travels, or we've learned from our travels um, together and solo, and as well as the information that I've gathered from being a travel agent for the last few months or so. So, we're going to start out. Amber's going to ask some questions. I'm going to answer. She's going to chime in. And we're going to go from there. Right. So, you probably are like us and have been thinking about the places you could be that are not where you are right now. If it's cold. Um, and what you need. What if you really want to go somewhere, what do you need when you come to a travel agent? What should someone have already when they come to you? If they know they want to go somewhere, what should they bring? Um... Nothing, honestly. Just an, uh, an idea of where you want to go um, and a budget. That would be really helpful. If you know you only have a $1,000, then just say that up front. Don't say, can you just find me something? That doesn't really help me or you because I need to know where to look to help you best and to not waste your time as well as my time. So just come with a general idea where you want to go and a budget and some dates if you have those in mind. Even if it's three months you know I may want to go in June July or August that's fine I can there's always trips going on in June July or August I just again need to know your budget if it's two to three days if it's 20 days if it's the seven days things like that and then we can we can hook you up it's not a problem okay so speaking of that speaking of time mm -hmm. how far in advance should someone plan their trip is it is so there... it's up to you and your budget if you want to um, go to Thailand um, tickets are going to be pricey right so it would best behoove you to try to plan your trip out as far as in advance as possible so that you can save on the flight costs. hotel costs are going to be relatively the same unless you're going in high season it's like Christmas spring break for kids things of that nature or when everybody typically travels to that region but if it's, um, you know, January, you should be good to go on hotel costs. Um, well, depending on the region again. Uh, but the flights are what's going to really going to end up eating your, your travel budget. All right. Cool. Um, <coughs> next question I think a lot of people have is, is it actually cheaper to book with a travel agent? It isn't necessarily. I wouldn't say that it's necessarily cheaper. I will say that it's not going to cost you more. Uh, and the reason why is that because if you go to a travel agent, they're going to go through tour companies. And those tour companies already have built into the system the commission they would pay a travel agent. They're either going to keep it or give it to me. The cost for you is not going to change, though. So if you don't want to do the research or you need help with your research or you just want the assurance of a fully booked trip and everything's good to go, you don't have to worry about anything, I would always say go to a travel agent. And I'm a person who loves to do research, who uh, loves to book those great once-in-a-lifetime deals on my own. Uh, but I could, save, I could have saved myself a lot of research, uh, a lot of hours spent just looking for those small details that make and break a trip 
if I just went to a travel agent and, and learned some things first. Um, and I'm not saying you can't do that. A D, uh, do it yourself trip is fantastic because you know that you have done everything. And if it's great, it's on you. And if it's bad, it's on you. And if it's bad, it's going to be bad. So go to a travel agent. You'll not only uh, get reassurance that the trip is going to go as planned. If there's any issues a travel agency can help you with, um, it can help you solve those problems as they come along. Um, so there's, again, it's just an insurance. It's not going to, again, not going to cost you anything more. And, and it's a great trip either way. And time is money. Mm-hmm. And we don't think about that enough. So the time that you spend going on and on and on looking when you could go to someone who already has access to all those resources. Right. It's like that in and of itself is saving you money. Money. Um, yeah. Um, what do you think are the biggest misconceptions people have about using a travel agent? Um, that they're going to try to steer you toward the higher priced item. It, no, we're not. Uh, I'm going to steer you toward the vacation that your budget says that you can do. Uh, it's just that simple. I'm not going to, excuse me, try to push you at, to a $5,000 vacation if you said your budget is 1500 It's not going to make any sense for you or for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're going to be frustrated with me. I w- will have wasted my time sending you information about a $5,000 trip when that's not what you can afford. Um, so that's, the I think, the biggest one. And again, that it's going to cost you more money. It's not going to cost you a penny more. Uh, and, and in some cases, you may actually end up getting a few freebies thrown in there because you went to a travel agent who knew about some specials that were going on that weren't advertised uh, on the website of whatever company that you had went to or something like that. You know, So you can always come to the travel agent for that. So that's the biggest m- misconceptions, I believe. Okay. Awesome. Um, does Wandering Soup just do LGBTQ trips? Oh, what of course kind of trips can you book? We do everything. If you want to travel, we can get you there. It's just that simple. If it's Southeast Asia, if it's Europe, it's, if it's America, uh, if it's Canada, South America, the islands, uh, the Caribbean, Mexico, and we can take you there. Uh, you just, again, just got to come to me with a budget, some dates in mind, and uh, a region that you want to travel. And you got to have a passport. If you yeah. want to go overseas. If you want to leave America, and it's not on a cruise, that's coming back to the same port that you left out of, you need a passport. It's just that simple. You should invest in it, uh, and it should be a valid passport that's valid six months past the date of your trip. And that's that's the, the best thing I can tell you in that regard. Have a valid passport. Okay, that kind of leads into my next question, because I was going to ask you what advice would you give someone who's traveling overseas for the first time? And that's probably the very first thing, but do you mm-hmm. have other advice for um, first time. Overseas. Yeah, if you want to travel, if you've never traveled before, first step will be to get your passport. Getting that passport is going to motivate you to travel. Uh, and it's going to secure uh, the travel. Meaning, when that great trip pops up on your timeline, on Facebook, on Instagram, or in an email newsletter that you got, you can jump because, hey, your passport is in hand and there are no restrictions. And you can go forth and vacation. Uh, The next step would be to read up on the area that you're going to. Uh, Read up on all the laws and customs as much as you possibly can. Verify if you need a visa or not. Apply for it if you need one. Go ahead and get it in hand. There's no reason to wait till the last moment. It's going to cost you more. Or it's just going to be some hiccups and things like that. You may even get denied. So you need to know that before you get on that plane. Um, Also, read up on the area that you want to stay in. If you found the perfect hotel or the perfect hostel, Uh, the perfect Airbnb, Uh, go to Google Maps, put in the address, and visually explore the area. Uh, Put the address in and just see what happens in Google. Uh, We did that with one vacation spot in Greece. It was beautiful online. Great Mm -hmm. pictures. Even the reviews were good. Uh, A couple of people mentioned it was sketchy at night. So we put the address in Google and let Google uh, perform its magic, and the end result was... Everybody outside of this site that we were going to be booking from said it was hella sketchy at night. The apartment was beautiful. And since we were two women that walking alone at night, we didn't think that would be the one for us. Because um, that Greece is um, a city that is open till 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. And we were out almost every night right. to at least 2 a.m. Uh, we actually just switched our body clocks almost, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. So... Um, I would that's what that those are the first few tips that I would do. Um, also, you know, um, 
you've got your research, you got your tickets, you got your lodging, um, get your money together. And I don't recommend buying euros. I don't recommend buying whatever currency of the country you're going to go to beforehand. I just don't. Uh, except for Cuba. Cuba is probably one exception. The reason why I don't is because you can almost guaranteed uh, pull cash from an ATM machine. Unless you're in Bora Bora and there are no ATM machines or something like that. Research that as well. If you're going to have to have cash, have cash on hand. Um, but I just don't think you need it. I think you end up pulling more than you need when you pull cash like that beforehand or go to the bank beforehand. Um, just spend carefully. Have a budget in mind. Um, one of the things that we talked about in one of the blog posts recently when it comes to travel costs uh, were excursions. Have that budget in mind when you're talking about a trip. Have a budget for your food cost, or eating in or eating out, and for your transportation costs once you arrive at your destination. There's so many things that, that weigh into making a vacation uh, great or good, and there's a distinction there. Uh, great is when you have everything covered and you know beforehand. Good is when you're a little bit surprised and you didn't realize, and your budget's not covering what you wanted to do. So, but if you know beforehand that every excursion is going to cost you fifty to hundred dollars. Then you know, okay, I'm only going to pick one or two excursions. Uh, I'm only going to go out to eat really, really well once or twice. And there's a time I eat like a local. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. um, but just have those ideas in your head. Um, and the other thing is if you're going with someone else and you're planning on sharing a room, discuss sleeping habits. Uh, I am a person who likes to sleep in the dark. I don't like a lot of noise except for white noise, which I've really started to love lately. And we have a machine that produces white noise. But other than that, I don't want a TV on, I don't want music playing, um, I don't want any of those distractions while I'm trying to sleep. Now, if you're, the person you're going with is the exact opposite of you when it comes to sleeping habits, uh, you're going to have a problem. So, it may behoove you to spring a little bit more and get separate rooms. Amber and I learned that very early on, right? Because Amber, and then you also have to get to vacation habits, right? Mm-hmm. Amber likes to sleep in on vacation. Oh, I was like, what are you talking about? We haven't had separate rooms. I was no. like, what do you mean? No, she likes to sleep in. I like to get up and go. So we compromise. And then there's also a day of the vacation where I don't want to do anything. I just want to recover. We've, we've, we've totally got our routine down now. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I still like to sleep run around in. a lot. Well, I like to sleep in, but I also like to run around, go around a lot. So, yeah. And so we're always rushed. And I figure if we get up at 8 o'clock instead of at noon... We don't have to rush around, but we can still see the same Very place. true. She has a very good point. And I see that now. I've learned the error of my ways. But my, we still don't get up to noon. My, I will put in this as advice, which to me is obvious. If you live in the United States, you know not to put yourself in situations that are precarious. And so the same goes for overseas, except that even more so when you're in public places like where you go to pick up, where you go to get the um, hop on, hop off bus or any place that's like heavily populated with tourists, you know, that, those are going to be the places that pickpockets are hanging out mm -hmm. and they're just hanging out and they look like everybody else. But you have to expect that if that's where you are, you're in the place with, where all the tourists are and some, there are definitely times you're going to be there. That's when you need to be like super aware and super on guard. Um, and that's it. Just, I think it's easy to like let your guard down, but um, when you're enjoying yourself, but that's exactly when you should not let your guard down. <laughs> Don't put your phone down. Amber is horrible for laying her phone down and walking away. I do it when thinks, you're there. Right, but I'm not always paying attention to her phone. And I told her, I said, the one day they're going to get it, you're going to be got. And it's just, we're going to just have to walk away and let it go. And she's like, no, but you're I'm not watching it, though. I'm not. <laughs> Don't rely on anybody else to watch your stuff. I've gotten pickpocketed, got my passport taken. Um, total lesson learned. Uh, it will hopefully never happen again. And uh, we're gearing up for our move. So we're trying to buy uh, gear that is uh, going to deter that as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So that we can have, you know, a great life overseas without our passports being stolen. Our money, right. our phones, uh, anything. Laptops, everything that we're going to carry over there. Absolutely. So, yeah. So, if you're out there right now and you are thinking about your next trip and how you want to do it, what are the next steps they can take if they want to get in contact? Sure. You can go to the website, www.wstravelingfolk.com, and uh, you can do an individual quote or a group quote, 
We also list uh, trips. If you're interested in those, you can just send a quick contact uh, information email. Um, and we do the Monday Traveling Monday Motivation Trips. Yep. And we do the Word Next Wednesday. So every Monday and Wednesday we push out a trip. And if you're interested in any of those things, again, just hit us up. Uh, three ways, again. You can do individual quote requests, group quote requests, or you can just hit the contact uh, button on the page. And everything will come to us and we'll reach out to you and uh, set you up on your next great vacation. And also info at wanderingsoup.com is our email address. Yep. You can definitely shoot an email on there. If you go through the site, it, it asks you some questions that may help you out in regards to your vacation too. Um, and then we, we actually post blogs once a week. Uh, the latest blog that we posted was five ways to be a tourist in your city. Take a look at that. It's a great little quick blog on how you can see your city through tourist eyes um, and cheaper eyes because you live there. Indeed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and our t-shirts, we have new travel gear for those of you who like to be comfortable while you're riding, but you also want to, you know, have your own little style going on. Mm -hmm. So definitely get your t-shirts um, on wanderingsoup.com. Yep, yep, yep. And we do have two sites. Um, the travel site that is totally travel related, and that's uh, wstravelingfolk.com, and then the Wandering Soup site, which has our blog, uh, a little bit more information about us, and uh, has our t-shirts and books that we read, and uh, the podcast that you're watching now, which is also on YouTube as well, under Wandering Soup, and we have an IG page, which is wandering underscore soup, I believe that's it, right? Oh, yes, Wandering underscore Soup. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Facebook page, Wandering Soup. Um, we're all over the internet. You can find us. And, uh, yeah, come through. And if you're thinking about traveling, if you just have some questions, you have to use us as a travel agency. If you just have some questions, uh, come talk to us. And we have a traveling uh, group on Facebook as well where we purchase, or post, rather, travel flight deals, and that's Traveling Folk on Facebook. Uh, find us there. And, uh, yeah, I think... That's that's a travel business yeah. so far. It's that's been great. It's been really, really great. Shout out to Spring for being my first customer. And uh, we've got some great trips coming up. What were you going to I thought you were going to say something. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought you were going to say something. Oh, no. But, but since Amber's been asking all these questions of me, I figured I would flip it a little bit to her and say, Amber, what's going on with you? How's the copy editing business? Yep. We're freelancing all the way over here full time. Um, so anybody out there who is a writer or who um, who writes, who know has friends who write, and they're trying to get their book out, um, I that's what I do. I help writers um, who need help, just maybe with motivation, getting their thoughts together, getting it down on paper, and then also you know with proofreading. Um, and then obviously copy editing once everything's done. So, um, and there's definitely been a, um, uptick in the beginning, at the beginning of the year in the publishing industry, people are trying to get their books out. And, um, so pretty much the books I'm working on are books that are going to be published this year. Books are going to be published in, um, June, July through December. Um, so yeah, if you have that, if that's been burning in you for some time and you just haven't pushed it out, push it out. I'm here to help. That's right. That's right. And she's been busy. I tell you, she's Indeed. been busy. It's been a, a hectic January mm -hmm. over here in the Williams household. Um, but it's been great. You know, it's been a, a smooth transition into, um, I guess, owning our own business as well. Well, two businesses with copy editing and travel agency. Uh, and we're, again, gearing up for our big move. We're going to have another video on our big move with firm dates and things of that nature. That's coming up soon. We're going to probably try to push out a video about once a week, right? Yeah. Yeah, try. About, yeah, about once a week. About once a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Look for us. Um, Anything you've been thinking about lately you want to share with the people? Yeah. Book me for travel. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Come I, through. That, talk to a sister. Mm -hmm. I'm here for you. I love you. Mm -hmm. And I love your traveling needs. I want them. Come talk to me. Let's get you booked on that dream vacation for you, your spouse, your partner, your your best friend, your family. Yes. Your cruises. Right. Family reunion trips. Yeah. Come through. Talk to us. We can put you on anything. If there's a trip and you want to get there, we can get you there. Uh, I do caution that just be realistic in your pricing. 
You know, you cannot go to Antarctica for a thousand dollars. It's not gonna happen. You just caught out there. You don't get caught out there. You're not even gonna get on a plane. Don't even get there. No, no, no. <laughs> no for a thousand. They gonna tell you way at the door. No, no. You're not gonna even. No, you're not gonna waste my time. Uh, and I'm not gonna waste your time with a thousand dollars trip to Antarctica. So. A Bora Bora. Uh, uh, no, not going to happen. Not going to happen. But anyway, it's been great talking to you all this week. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it, right? Yeah. yeah. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in to Wandering Soup Traveling Folk. Again, check us out on the website, www.wstravelingfolk.com. www.wanderingsoup. That was three W's, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wanderingsoup.com. Find <laughs> us on IG, wandering underscore soup. Uh, find us also on Facebook, Wandering Soup. Find us on YouTube, Wandering Soup. Uh, subscribe to our weekly newsletter where we discuss articles, such as the one we just pushed out, Five Ways to Be a Tourist in Your City. And you also get an email of all of our weekly deals, Monday Traveling Motivation, and we're next Wednesday. We will see you, hopefully, next week. Peace and love, y'all. Bye, Peace y'all. and love.